So I haven't been showing this on video, but roughly between every video I've committed the new files, the changes I've done to my repository. Again, micro check-ins are good, comments are better. When you look at the log, for example, I can bring this up here, go over here, and let's say tortoise SVN, show log, and it's going to show me the log of everything I've done. I'm keeping my URL out of the screen so you don't know so no one out there in YouTube land can try to hack me. Anyway, you can see here's all the... I can click here and I can update to different revisions and go back in time if you would. And the comments really help you to see exactly what was modified, added here. Then what exactly did I do there? There's the comment. And so the comments are a big help. Micro check-ins, good thing. Uh, Repository is good thing. I'll, as often as I can, I'll check in once per video or even more than that. Let me close this, and we need to set up some sort of game loop. And essentially a game loop is an infinite loop that runs and runs and runs and runs, and, and every time the loop runs, we update all the game state, and we draw the results onto the screen. If you've played uh, any decent game, you'll see games get up to 60 times a second, or even higher, but 60 times a second, that's considered a high fidelity experience where you can't really... It, it looks very fluid, looks very fast, looks like you're really in there. Whereas you can get down to 30 frames a second, still good, not the best. And then if you've ever experienced any lag in your game, you'll see that the frames pause and it just ruins the whole experience to have one frame go bad in the middle of even 30 to 40 frames. If one frame takes too long and you see that frame, then it stops your playable experience. So don't generally don't want to go lower than 30. If you can get up to 60, great. It all depends on how much computing you're doing per frame. If there's a a lot of AI to com compute and a lot of drawing to compute and collisions and all those sorts of things, then your frames are going to be expensive. But if there's not as much, then your frames will be cheap. We need to get something that's pumping this loop, this infinite loop, so that we can write our code to make our frames happen. And the simple way I'm going to do it for now, later on, I hope to adjust this to maybe a Windows loop, but for now we're using Qt. I'm going to default to the Qt timer and just tell the timer, hey, call my function update as fast as you can, as often as you can, and I'm going to write code to make things happen. So let's see if we can do that. I'm going to pound and glue the Qt slash Q timer. And let's give our GL window a Q timer. Q timer. My timer. And then in initialize GL we need to give this timer a function to call. So if I, I pulled up here the Q timer, one nice thing about QT is you can pretty much Google anything. It takes you right to these nice, straightforward help pages. I brought up the Q timer class reference uh, page here. Shows you the include, all the members, things to look at, da 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 da. Then you get down to the detailed description and it shows you roughly how to use the Q timer. So we need to instantiate one which we did. I didn't do it on the heap. I just did it directly in my object as a aggregate there. And then we need to connect the timer. It's going to fire a timeout signal and we need to accept it on a slot which we can call whatever we want. It can be called update. We can call my update. doesn't really matter. Uh, and then we need to start our timer and I believe this here is the interval as to how often or how long it waits in milliseconds before it'll call our timeout function. So we're going to set this to zero, try to get it up as fast as we can. This connect syntax, uh, this is the first time we've encountered this. This is signals and slots in Qt. I definitely recommend studying up on Qt and seeing how signals and slots work in depth. I will show you enough here to at least get the application going and hopefully uh, it'll make some sense. Okay, first things first. I want to say timer dot, or I call it my timer, my timer dot connect uh, the, the sender is oh whoops duh. I'm gonna I'm gonna use the QT syntax here connect address my timer it takes a pointer so I need to give it the address of my timer the signal that I want to use is timeout okay and this this is something specific to my timer again if I bring this help window back up scroll to the top we should say signals. I'll click on signals. It'll take us down the page. And you can see it has a timeout signal. So yes, I have to match that perfectly in my code right here. Alright, and then it's going to invoke a function on this object. And the function I want it to do, let's do slot and my, we'll call it my update. OK, 
Okay. Now we haven't written my update yet, so we better we better do that here. And I'm going to put that in the private section of our GL window. Void my update with a semicolon there, and then we get error expected a parenthesis. Of course, you did right there. Okay. And then so we've connected my timer, and I'm going to say my timer dot start. And the argument here is milliseconds of delay. Delay nothing. Get going. Start cranking this thing out constantly. Let's build this, run this. We'll get some errors. But it's good to see the errors before I explain the solution to those errors. Here's the screen. Here's the error. Connect! No such slot. My update in blah, 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 blah. Let me explain what's going on here. We, we said uh, when my timer has a timeout signal, then we want to invoke my update, which is a function. We didn't really give it a body yet, did we? We should probably do that, huh? Uh, it's interesting we didn't get a linker error there. Void my GL window, my update. Okay, good. All right, and then bring the error back up. No such slot my update. In fact, now that we have that, let me just run this again show you we still get the error, even though I added this here. Okay, no such slot, my update. Well, what's a slot? This so signals and slots, if you're used to .NET, they're like events. If you're used to Java, they're like events and event handlers, C-sharp event handlers as well. Uh, basically, every language that I know of has this idea that something happened, we need a hook into something that happened, we're going to fire an event or call a function to make some magic go. And that's what QT's version is. It's signals and slots. The event that happened is the timeout event. Okay, the timer decided, hey, it's time to fire off another timeout. And the handler we have is my update. But QT has this, it's trying to use some metadata information. There's another big word, metadata and reflection. If you're strong in that, which you probably aren't, uh, that, I don't even want to go there. How do we get this working? Okay, first of all, I have to say slots here. Private slots, right? Build it, run it. We're going to get the build error because that's still open. Let's try it again. Build succeeded. Connect, no such slots still. We have to generate some QT code so it can know that this is a slot. All right, now what's a slot? Well, first of all, let me confuse you even more by saying Q object here. And I'm just going to drop that there. It's a macro, preprocessor macro. Again, go look at my preprocessor playlist if that's new to you. But this jumps, this dumps a whole bunch of QT stuff that we need to have signals and slots. It dumps it right here into our class declaration, not our definition. Again, the C++ video playlist if you're not familiar with the difference between a declaration and a definition. So this is going to declare a whole bunch of stuff that we're going to need. We also have the slots down here. Let's build it, run it. And this time we get build errors, not not runtime errors, build errors. So what's the build errors? Well, it's a linker error. Those, and I know these look scary, but they're really not that bad. Let's look at these linker errors. Metacast, const char star, what does that mean? My GL window, metal cat, metacast object, meta, again I said metadata, it's adding some metadata info. C++ doesn't have reflection and metadata uh, capabilities built in. Does that, do you need to know what that means? Not necessarily, but for now it just means it's trying to do the signal and slot thing and Qt likes to add the metadata functionality itself so that it can use it. So it's basically this band-aid that the Qt people are putting on so that they can pull metadata information from our object. And all that magic happens from this macro, from this macro, so on and so forth. So let me build this, metacall, blah, 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 saying, hey, you told me that that this was going to be here. Basically, the Q object declaration up here said these were going to be in our class, but we haven't defined them. They're declared, but they're not defined. Adding this Q object macro declared them, but it didn't define them. So we actually need to define them. A couple ways to do it. We can type it out by hand and pray we get it right over here in the compilation unit. Or we can have Qt do it for us. I think I'd rather rely on Qt doing it for us. Now if I remember right, I'm going to open up the Visual Studio command prompt here. Get it on the screen. Go back to my root directory. I'm going to list, meaning directory, give me 
I believe I have mock.exe on my root. I did. Okay, when you download Qt and you install it, somewhere in the directories there, you will find this mock.exe. I I'm a little hackish. I copied mock.exe to my C colon backslash just so I can find it easily and quickly. But mock essentially it will take a header file like this one and generate the definitions required by this Q object macro. Okay, let me say that again. It'll take the declarations that Q object adds to our class here and generates the definitions for them in their own CPP file. Let me see if I can show you. I, I'm going to go here. Let's change to where this my GL window is located. I'm going to change directory. Let's see, what do I call it? My, is it engine? Oh, I can't even remember. Oh, I didn't even notice. I have this error here. Let me try that again. Not D colon back. So that's D colon. Change to the D drive. CD, my engine. Change directory into my engine folder. Uh, and then I remember, yep, project files. So change directory into project files. I'm hitting tab to do that autocomplete there. Uh, let's see, dir. Dir means list of directory contents. CD, sandbox, game, hit tab to autocomplete. Dir. Okay, here's my gl window.h. This is the same file over here. I need to generate the compilation unit that will have the definitions for what this Q object macro adds. Oh, look at that. If I hover over that, that shows me the whole definition of the macro. If you look at that, that is quite the macro. But but just glance at it. I'm not going to move my mouse, but if you glance at it, look, it, it's adding all these static cons, Q meta object, static meta, meta object, Q object, get static meta object. That's another macro, so it's calling another macro. Virtual cons, Q meta object, pointer, meta object, print, print cons. Look at all those declarations it's adding. We need to add the definitions. So. That's simple. Uh, let's do c colon backslash mock.exe. I don't have to put the .exe, but I will. Uh, my gl window dot h. Hit enter, and look at that. Look at that. It just dumped all the code necessary for those declarations right to the console. I don't know about you, but using code in the console is going to be painful. How about we redirect the output from this mock.exe to a compilation unit or a CPP file so that we can use that CPP file in our Visual Studio project back here. Let's do that. I'm going to mock.exe my gl window.h this right angle bracket means redirect the output. I'm going to redirect it to my gl window.cpp but I don't want to do .cpp because that's going to overwrite my CPP file, and I want to keep my code here. This code's important. So a little convention I keep is I just do this underscore mock, so I can tell that this compilation unit was, or it, it was generated by mock, and it's not my code. I basically should not touch this file. Hit enter, and there we go. I can type, meaning list the contents of my GL window dot or underscore mock.cpp. Again, there it is. It's not going to do us much good if we don't compile it, so I'm going to go back to my project here. Control Alt L. Right click sandbox game. Actually, there's a couple ways to do this. I'm going to do this a different way. I'm going to say, hey, show all files in sandbox game. And you see there's our mock file. The minus icon means it's not part of the project, but we're just seeing it because I said show all files. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say, hey, I actually want that compilation unit included into my project. So include it. Now I can go back to don't show all files. Double click on this and whoo, here we go. Let's see. Oh, let me zoom out here. Control scroll back. Warning, all changes in this file will be lost. Yes, because it's a generated file. Blah, blah, blah. blah. And you can go through here and look. It's not too technical what they're doing here. They're just adding the functionality to have those signals and slots. Notice we have this my update slot. So if I go over here and search for my update, you can see here const char star q meta string. There's my update. Okay, and then my update. This is when it calls it and that kind of thing. So if you want to get in the magic of that, go ahead and look at it, but no big deal. Um, so this has declarations. Then we also have our own declarations here. Our compilation unit is handling our declarations, and then this mock compilation unit, oh, there it is, is handling the declarations that come 
from the Q object macro up here. Kind of cool. If you know C sharp, it's kind of like partial classes. If you don't know C sharp, then don't relate it to anything and just learn it. Let's uh, let's build and run this. See if it if it works. Build started. Build succeeded. Boom. Okay, at least it's running again. <laughs> no errors. Nice white triangle. Okay, I'd, I'd like to see if it's actually doing something there though, instead of uh, just hoping that it is. So let's 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 output something to the console. Writing to the console is very slow operation. It'll slow us down a lot. But let's write something to the console just to show that something is actually happening. Couple ways to do it. I could use the built-in Q debug facility. I probably should, but for now, just to be cheap, and because the video is getting a little long, I'm going to pound include I'll stream using std c out using std nline nline control n to go to the end here. And I'm going to say c out frame nline. Okay, run it. Hope this works. You can see we're having this this timer is just going crazy. It's running our frame, running our frame. And eventually we'll calculate what our frame rate is. But right now we just know all these frames are coming at us. And as long as uh, the frames are above at least 30 frames a second, then we'll have somewhat of a fluid game experience. Okay, sorry this video got a little long, but uh, there you go.